What's up guys, my name is Joe McGovern and this is JM Cad. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel if you're coming back for more. I really appreciate if you guys could leave a comment and tell me where you're from. I go through all my comments and I'd love to put you up on my board. This board signifies to me as a teacher that I am teaching people across the world. So without wasting any more time, we're jumping back into the Unity software package and we're finishing up Rollerball. Let's get into it. All right, ladies and gents, let's jump right back in. This is Unity Hub 3.0. If you need to, you can update yours. You'll see it up here in this top bar. Uh, I am also working, if you go into installs here, in the, I've upgraded since the last video, 2020.3.2 Ford F1, which is the long-term support software version uh, that is most recent, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my projects and open up my Rollerball project. Go ahead and let that load. And where did we leave off? We created the plane, the walls, uh, the pickups, which are a prefab, which later will rotate, uh, and the player, which is the sphere. We also tidied up our document. We created a materials folder, a prefabs folder, and a scripts folder. In scripts, we have the camera controller, which is gonna be the actual movement of the camera, the player controller, which is the movement of our player, the sphere, and the rotator script, which is gonna be the uh, prefabs rotating on the screen. In prefabs, we have one of the pickups. So if I wanted to add another one, all I'd have to do is just drag that right into the scene and it would already have all of the components that we put on our rotator pieces. In the materials folder, we created the ground, the pickup, the player and walls, and we used varying colors, which are simple for now, in order to make them a little bit different from each other. There are two important things we have to do before we start scripting. Number one, under edit, you're gonna go to preferences and under external tools, make sure your external script editor is set to Visual Studio. You'll know if they're linked because when you open up one of your scripts, you'll start typing some of your coding and the words themselves won't highlight saying that Visual Studio doesn't understand the different variables and functions that you're using. If it is linked, there'll be different colors. Second thing we have to do is we have to add a tag to our pickups. So if you open up this parent child folder here, under pickup or pickup one, you'll see that your tag probably says untag. We're gonna add a tag, I've already done this on mine, and you're gonna call it pickup. Now, if you do that on all of them, so what I'm doing here is I'm clicking on the first one, holding shift, and then hitting the down arrow six, seven times to get them all selected, and you can add the tag all in one shot. What that's gonna do is it's gonna allow us to call back to these prefabs, to these pickups, with just one simple word within the coding. That way we don't have to say like, hey, we want pickup one to rotate, we want pickup two to rotate. We can just say we want the pickups to rotate. So what's gonna happen here is we're gonna want this sphere, this player to move when we use the keys W, A, S, and D. W is forward, S is backward, A is to the left, and D is to the right. Without installing the input system package in Unity, it won't understand any inputs that you do on your keyboard. So we have to go to Window, Package Manager, you're gonna change this right here to say Unity Registry. If you're in one of the older ones, it's gonna say all packages or something like that. And that's gonna give you all of the packages that are built into Unity. We're gonna find the one that says Input System. And right here, you're gonna click on Install. Mine is already added, but go ahead and install that so that your project understands inputs on the keyboard. When you press one of those keys, WASD, it's gonna add a force to the ball in that specific direction. In order for there to be forces, we need to add what's called a rigid body on the sphere. So go and click on player, go to add component and type in rigid and you can add a rigid body. This is adding mass and drag and gravity and different things like that to our player. That way you can add forces and move left, right, forward, backward. Something else we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna go to file and go to build settings. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the architecture, if you're on a Windows platform, is set to x86 underscore 64. So that's a 64-bit version of Windows, which we're all working with now. We'll understand this a little bit better when we go to build our scene and play our game. Now we need to add the input system to our player. So if you click on player and you click add component, you can type in input and you'll see it says player input. So we're basically taking the input system and we're putting it on our player 
That way we can map its movements to the keyboard. The next thing you want to do is hit create actions in this folder, create a new folder and call that inputs. And in the inputs folder, we're going to save this as input action and hit save. You can go ahead and close the window that pops up. But now you can see that on your player, it's asking what you would like the inputs to come from a keyboard, a game pad, a touch controller, a joystick, or XR, which is mixed reality, augmented reality, virtual reality. We'll leave that as any for now. Go ahead and double click on the player controller script. Let me talk a little bit about the base script here that comes with Unity and what all of these things mean. These up here are called the namespace. You'll see that it already comes preloaded with three of them saying like, hey, we're going to use the Unity engine. Unity and Visual Studio are not the same software and they do not work with each other unless you make them work with each other. That's why it says using Unity Engine so that it understands all of those things that come with Unity. We also wanted to understand that input system that we just created. So if you type using Unity Engine dot input system semicolon, it will now understand Unity's input system. So you can actually press things on the keyboard and have them translate to movements in the game. Player controller is the name of our script. By the way, guys, if this is helping you at all, do me a huge favor, like this video, that way other people will see it. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna see other videos and turn on the bell if you wanna see the notifications for every video that I upload. I really appreciate it. All right, so going back to scripting now, I wanna explain the other two parts of this project. You see void start, which is an input. Inside the curly braces is going to be your function, what you want it to do. And void start means this is what's going to happen the very first frame of the game. You also have void update in here. Inside the curly braces of that is also a function, and that's going to define anything that happens every frame of the game. So if you're playing a game at 60 frames per second, it's going to update that every frame, 60 frames per second for the entire game. An example of a void start would be like the fact that we're counting up every time we touch one of those pickups. We want the game to start at zero because we haven't picked any up yet. So we would define in void start, hey, the count is zero right now. An example of void update would be how we wanna track the different movements of the player, of the sphere. We wanna know its position and the forces added to it throughout the entire game, every frame. You can go ahead and take out void update for now. We will not be using that. We had to do a little bit of setup in the game in order to start scripting. So before we end this video here, why don't we go ahead and do a control shift S, which is gonna save our script we can then close our script, save our game, and close for now. I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. I'll see you in part three. Later.